All right, so we're going to go back into my sketchbook with uh, fountain pen and white and do a character study this time of this really great shot of this uh, really great woman. And you can tell she's got a great sense of humor the way she's dressed. So let's get started and you can take a look. So I'm just going to play some things along, and since it's pen and ink, I'm not going to do as careful of a lay-in because I don't want all those lay-in construction lines in there. So I'm just kind of marking things off here. And it's... <coughs> It's a slightly more graphic. I'm dealing with more of the uh, shapes rather than the full structures with the construction lines. I'll do. I do some of that. Yeah, I don't mind doing some of that, but I tend to just uh, work with a little more sketchy and um, let it be as it is going to be. So I don't have quite the structural information to go on, and it creates again a little bit of risk involved, which. Uh, mentioned a few times and I like that risk and then I'm going to let uh, the shadow shapes do most of the work they're going to kind of simply is find the form. Or forms, plural. And they're going to create a graphic interest. We're going to get these, this um, pattern happening of dark against light that's going to kind of jigsaw puzzle together. And that creates lots of interest, lots of little visual avenues to travel down. Keeps your audience interested. And then it makes uh, pattern become a little bit more of a, a um, tool than it normally is in realism. Okay. Has this wonderful nose, and it's just uh, catching this beautiful pattern of light. So it's a pleasure to get to work with that. She's dressed up uh, with that uh, Viking helmet. My kids, when they were four, had exactly the same helmet, actually, so it made me laugh when I picked it out. One of the reasons I chose it. So it's nice, uh, nice little bit of humor there. So notice how we come off the outside of the socket here. The <clears throat> shadow of the eyeballs in here that I've barely defined. And then we swing forward with a little bit of a break and then down again, down that front of the face. So um, I want to find that symmetry across. I want to, what I do here, I want it to pick up here and feel symmetrical if it is symmetrical. And the face and the body, of course, have bilateral symmetry. So you have an eye over here and you have an eye over there, usually. You have a cheekbone, cheekbone, and they're fairly similar. Not exact, but fa quite similar 
in uh, shape and proportion. And of course, they're in that uh, symmetrical positioning. So I want this cheekbone to push out and then down the cheek pushing out and then down to the jowls area and then to the chin. And that stepping out, if you can look past those eyelashes that I've barely suggested there, I'll play them up there a little bit. Um, that is what we want to feel on both sides. And then that's going to feel structural. We're completing the story. It starts on this side, it ends over there. The shadow then defines that whole front plane of the face in a really terrific way. Here again is the jowl area, those wonderful shapes and fantastic shadows on those. It's just uh, fun stuff. And notice past the chin, dot, dot, dot. We connect right into the neck and the chin interrupts that. So when I get an interruption, I just as a matter of course, look past that interruption, interrupting this way. I look past it to see if it doesn't pick up again. And it quite often will. Not all the time by any means, but quite often it will. And that, that's compositional, that's helpful because it ties these separate things together. We tend to look at all the separation and we miss the togetherness. And we really want that togetherness. So, um, always the biggest possible picture. It's our job to make sense of things. And the more we can connect, the more we can not be fooled and distracted by the interruptions into seeing some little staticky bit of detail and the more we can see the cohesive, bigger statement, the big composition, the, uh, the more uh, pleasing or engaging, depending on what you're trying to get out of your art, uh, your art will be. And so it's, it's critical that we see those things and that doesn't mean we always use those. We may not use what we see, but, um, we need to be aware that it's there. I'll give her a little bit of funny dotted eyes since she's got the funny Elmer Fudd helmet on. And again, that's just a fun shadow shape. If I just track the shadows off the sideburn area down into the hollow, the inner um, canal, uh, ear canal in there, and then up over the, the lobe structure, it's just a fun ride. If you're on a sled on the snow, that would be a real fun, you know, your heart would go in your throat a little bit and you'd probably give a shout of glee if you were, um, someone who likes those kind of wild rides, and I do, at least on the paper, if not always on the hill. But it's, that's just an exciting way to get down from that part of the journey. That's, that's what I'm looking for when I'm, uh, when I'm uh, dealing with this stuff. It's not necessarily what you'd be looking for. It's not the only way to go. You might want to play these things down and there'll be times where I do play things down.
course, the hair gives you all sorts of opportunities to play with the, the fluid, fluidity of it. And you may uh, make a big deal out of that or not. Nice long neck, pulls down here, uh, shoulders kind of hunch up. let that vignette out, getting kind of uh, ever more faint and lost. And for this little sketch, I'm not trying to get these highlights. You know, there's a lot of blasted out highlights here that could be very cool in the right portrait. I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm just kind of indicating these. And that kind of goes back to my days of why I started doing these tone paper illustrations or renderings is uh, really to teach myself how to paint, try and figure out how to paint because I wasn't very good at color uh, I wasn't good at uh, the process of painting, you know, the skill set needed for that. So I equated it to drawing and uh, used a drawing technique that started to sh sneak towards a painting technique, painting medium. So having the tone paper going darker with the pen and then lighter with the pencil was very, or darker with the dark chalk and lighter with the light chalk it was real close to what I, what you would do in paint if you were doing a sergeant or a interior sergeant portrait or a, or a Rembrandt. <clears throat> so that's what I'm doing here. I'm kind of indicating where those uh, shape patterns and value patterns would be without really hitting you over the head with it. All right, that was our little study of the Viking woman. I hope you enjoyed it. It's fun to do the character stuff. I hope it was fun to watch. We'll do much more of it in the future, and I will see you in the future. Thanks again.